Good morning and welcome back to the One Celtic Fans View. A little bit of coffee before we start the day. And this morning, Celtic news, it's all about the excitement of it being the 30th of January. The 30th of January and <clears throat> we still haven't signed um, a striker or a left back. And yes, the, the transfer window does close in just a few, few days. But Celtic, I'm led to believe... Are actively seeking to bring in players. We'll talk about that in a minute. One player that is leaving the building is Gustav Lagerbelke. Lagerbelke is heading off to Italy. The Swedish defenders found themselves not wanted, not loved by Brendan Rodgers. The three million pound summer signing that came in, um, and if you remember, Celtic put out uh, a video saying that Celtic always need a Swede. You remember that? They put back in the summer, they put a video out from our next player and he come in and he said Celtic always need a Swede. That one lasted long, doesn't it? Anyway, the fact that he um, he was the former Defender of the Year back in Sweden, he, he's look as if he will move to Italy on a loan with an option to buy. Fabrizio Romano has also revealed then all this talk about Van Hoydonk, and I spoke about this at length last night on the live, and if you've missed that, I'll put the, the link up towards the end of this video. Um, Van Hoydonk, uh, the young son of Pierre. Pierre, there's only one Pierre. I thought I'd wear this top um, with that in mind today. Pierre Van Hoydonk was a player that was um, a bit disruptive in the, the dressing room. For younger members of the channel and the community that, that don't remember those days, um, he was a fantastic player and he could score a fantastic free kick. He was part of what was called the Three Amigos. The Three Amigos, which was Paolo Di Canio, Pierre Van Hoydonk and George Cadet. All of them were a fantastic servants to the club um, in one way or the other and all were moved on quite swiftly uh, within their time at Celtic. And Van Hoydonk was uh, one of the probably, well, but it's, a, it's a toss of the coin, really, which one was more disruptive, the Canio in the dressing room or Van Hoydonk? <laughs> so take your pick. Uh, the, the apple hasn't fallen too far from the cheap tree, as far as I'm concerned, with Van Hoydonk Jr. The fact is, the facts are that Celtic have not made contact with Bologna, right? Fabrizio Romano has admitted that Celtic have not made contact with Bologna. So with all the speculation going around that we're going to go for this Van Hoydonk, um, we have not made contact with Bologna. With less than two days to go in the transfer window, I can't see that one happening. So we move on from the Van Hoydonk. I think it's just a lot of press and I think it's his dad trying to get him a better deal somewhere else. Mark Henry has also uh, broke the news that Rocco Vata turning down that deal last night. And, and other Celtic transfer news that has been widely spoken about this morning that Celtic are to target loan transfers from England as they look to strengthen in a couple of areas before the end of the deadline. Well, we've just seen this one coming, don't we? With all this money that we've got in the bank, we can't go out and seemingly and find decent players to buy, and we're going to bring them in on loan. And we're probably bringing them in on loan with an option to buy. The fact that there, there might be a few players leave in the next couple of days, hopefully, I mean, the likes of James McCarthy should be chased out the door. Um, you think back to last summer when Celtic were handing out five-year contracts like Swedes, um, like chips in a chip shop, like... I don't know, whatever they want, really. They were just handing out contracts ridiculously to, to players that were coming in. Celtic fans are getting a little bit impatient with this transfer window. Um, I don't know where a lot of people and a lot of fans, I mean, it's we know we needed a left-back, we needed a striker. Yes, I can understand those two areas. We went and brought in another wide player, which is a bit bamboozling to me also. Anyway, Brendan Rodgers uh, has said right from the start of the window, if you go back to any Brendan Rodgers interviews back in November, he did say that we, we need to bring in quality quality we need to I use that several several times after games and especially after games where he said uh, we need more quality in the last third we need more quality in the last third and that last call that quality in the last third has not came into Celtic we've had you know a couple of months now that you if you're going to be looking at anyone you're going to look at them in December like what the previous manager did and trying to get them in early, but Celtic just don't seem to be doing that just now, which is getting on the titties of the fans. Let's face it, it's just getting on the tits of everyone. Everyone's a bit peed off with it. Everyone's starting to get a bit of their frustrations. Now, I had an interesting conversation with my brother, and he says, look, Celtic fans, it's like Celtic fans it, says, you know, it always happens at this time of year. You go through a little sticky spell, we come out the other end and we go on a run. The, the trophy cabinet says that 
the people that have been running the club have done not too bad over the last decade, apart from the, the one year where Lawwell will give Neil Lennon the job full time and he had one job to do was win the 10. And anyway, but we move on for that. Anyway, that's it's besides the point. The transfer window is closing. I was asked that um at the beginning of the transfer window, what I thought we would do. And I said, nobody knows what we're going to do because Celtic are, have brought in that many players. It's going to be hard to try and bring in first team ready players. Now, these players that were brought in in the summer were meant to be first team ready players. So um, the fact that Brendan Rodgers, does, Brendan Rodgers doesn't think that they are Celtic quality and has decided to move, especially Gustav lager -Belke. I mean, the fact that they brought him in for good money and they're moving them on, on, on already is quite a surprise because that, to me, says that the people in the background, the people that are in the department for spotting talent is uh, are, are not doing their job to the, the fullest or, or maybe they're not good enough. Maybe they are the ones who are not good enough for Celtic. Um, maybe the people that are in the recruitment staff who have done okay to a certain extent, but there seems to be a, a sort of a three-year cycle at Celtic. They seem to get in some good players and, they, and then bring in a whole load of rubbish. Now, it is hard to bring in talent, as they say, and prospects and try and make them better. But when you look, I mean, I, I, can, only, I can only say what I'm seeing here in Spain. Spain. Teams in Spain manage to go out and buy younger players from teams that they know are going to be the real deal. I mean, if, for instance, Atletico Madrid go out and buy an 18-year-old player for 20 million in the same week that they tried to get in Matt O'Reilly uh, on loan. And and even if they didn't get, even if they did get Matt O'Reilly in on loan, they were still bringing in this 18-year-old for 20 million. They're building for the future. So it's something that Celtic don't seem to be doing. We seem to have went backwards. We seem to have went backwards. During the run to the nine in a row, you can understand why there was a need to keep the players and, and keep the mainstay of the team. And th everything was focused to get into that nine and, and hopefully the 10. There seems to be an inability within Celtic to look further ahead. Well, you can't say that because the players that they're bringing in, if the, if the prospects worked out. But then again, how long would they be at Celtic? The average lifetime of a, a, a Celtic player and um, these days, there's only about two or three seasons. We can get two or three seasons out of them, and then we know that we're going to sell them. It's the way that the club is. The club's in a financial position where, can we change that model slightly? Can, we have been bringing in players on five-year contracts, and maybe there is a change going on in the background that we're not too sure about. And the five-year contract thing was is a thing that came in on, under Ange, and it seems to be going on. But it's getting the right players in, anyway. Speculation. Mark Henry says that Rocco Vata has turned down the deal, but the talks are ongoing. Transfers, well, Brendan Rodgers is going to be looking at the English market for a couple of loan players. He knew this was going to happen. He knew this was going to happen, considering that our window shuts an hour after the window in England. You know what will happen. We'll wait and pick up the dross um, to bring players in, and it'll be seen as a successful window. A successful window, and it'll be successful for a couple of reasons. It's successful because we managed to retain Carter, Carter Vickers, Cameron Carter Vickers. We managed to retain Rocco Vata if that deal goes through. We managed to fend off the mighty Athletic Home Madrid and keep Matt O'Reilly. And then we've still got James Forrest. We've still got, <laughs> we've still got James McCarthy, should I say. Still got James McCarthy, and we've still got Benji Segrist, and we've still got Alexander Bernabe, and to name a few other players that should have been gone this window, but weren't and that's all because Celtic put them on fantastic wages and big long contracts so on that note uh, there's a midfielder confirms no talks with Celtic well, there's a surprise um, Paolo Bernardo is currently enjoying the longest run since his moves but I don't know why people are even I don't even know why I read that headline. Have a quick look through the headlines so you don't have to this morning. Um, the signing with the Celtic fans, Pundit, says that Celtic should back 23-year-old, not missing goals. Neil Lennon sticks his Celtic transfer colours on the mast and names striker who can remedy Kyogo worry. Oh, come on, Jesus, really? Alistair Johnson has commented on the patchy pitch at Celtic Park. And Oda Moon has been describing his relationship with Brendan Rodgers. You can see all the good news stories getting put out there already um, in, in, in preparation for an a, absolute crap ending at the transfer window, let's face it. And you can see it happening already. You can see the media, the change in the media. Um, don't tell, don't don't be prepared for it. I mean, it will happen. It will happen. Celtic will put out all this good news, happy birthday card crap. 
and it'll be um, <sighs> overly exciting. But let's just hope we can crack on, crack on at the weekend and uh, win the game once the transfer window is done and dusted, and then we can crack on until the end of the league and retain our championship for three in a row. And on that note, have a fantastic day, Celtic fans all around the world. <laughs>